name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let tongues and authority to be in the Holy Spirit. In the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let tongues, communion, supreme celebration, even unto the mighty and everlasting Father, now and forever. Place of pride. We thank thee even as we pray that grace come 
occur pragmatically. And pragmatically will grow and spread far and near, having better across the states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, even beyond Nigeria. Pray that your grace takes pragmatical to be fully established, investor, having better across the whole universe. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most loving Father, we give you thanks. For this day you have planned to gather your children in appreciation, mighty and everlasting Father, to your family and workers. Mighty and everlasting Father, you are the one that feed them, that you have selected and chosen to serve thee. Through the instrumentality of your vessel, in your children you have blessed, empowered. You have faithful. Today is that day of great blessing. And as many that have received their blessings, as many that have received their goodness, as many that thou have blessed, will come to thee with a heart of thanks and say, Father, thank you. Thank you, I give this back unto you. For the benefit of their children and to the glory of their name. Bless them who shall show faithfulness. Empower them who have none. Those who have, bless them. Those who do not have, bless them. Let this day be a turning point in the life of all. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting Father, King of glory, there is none like you. Thank you, Father, for your children who are at distant places, as thou hast said, and we believe you. You are a quickening spirit. You travel the whole universe in the moment in the second, and you know their children, and their children know you when they hear your voice. They come unto you. Those that have no place of worship within and around Nigeria, within and outside the country. We commit them into thy hands. Pray to the O Father. For distance is not a barrier for you to reach and bless your children. Let them who are far. Let them who are near. Empower them. Set them free. Deliver them. Empower them. Glorify yourself in them. Make a way for them even when they seem to be not. Resolve all complexities and difficulties of life. Change things. Change their narratives. Empower them particularly financially. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly and everlasting Father. We know you have always answered us, but we thank you for answering us this day. Mighty and everlasting Father, we pray that you increase our faith, increase the commitment, the zeal, the determination, the will. Make it strong that your children shall always be resolute to worship, to follow you with commitment in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting Father, we commit this week into thy hands. Thou hast made a new thing in our life. Giving us a new week is a new dawn, a new life, a new face. Thank you, Father, for this new week shall be a week of joy. For we believe that it's a week of great empowerment, a week of sanctification, a week of purification, a week of upgrading spiritually, physically. Upgrade them for your children, heal the sick, deliver all those who are under bondage, slavery, attack, captivity of any kind, those who have been praying and their prayers seem not to be answered. Answer them, answer us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Father Father, in all we pray that you be before and behind us. For you are our need, you are our guide. You are our provider, a sustainer, a helper. You are the only one we have. Always be before and behind us. As we commit everything into thy hands, we believe that thou hast made all things perfect. Manifest in our midst that our joy will continually be great, even now and forevermore. Amen. Let thanks and all glory be to thee in the name of our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let glory and honor be to the heavenly Father in the blood of our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let come the supremest and most of the back of the supremest. Right unto the most loving Father in the Lumba, Lumba, now and forevermore. Our first Bible lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Second, second point. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 to 8. Every man according to as his purpose in his heart. So let him give what God give or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace above toward him, that he always have all sufficiency. All things may amount to everything in the name of Lord Jesus Christ.
We are in the second governance in state for second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 11 to 13. Now therefore perform the dream of it, that as there was that as there was a witness to be, so there may be performance also out of that which you have. For if the if there be first a willing mind, it is it is acceptable according to that a man has, and not according to that he have not. For I mean not the other men be seized and be brought in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Of receiving a blessing as a reward. 
and blessing does not flow if there was not a a willing one. Blessing flows in an atmosphere of willingness. Whatsoever everything that you do, provided is to the glory of God, it must be with absolute willingness to guarantee you a blessing. Pray a happy church. So what is important to me, what is important to you, is not how much service, it's not how much appreciation, it's not how much you give, but how much do you will in your heart to do that which you have done, or to do that which is required to be done? What is your mindset then? We have said to you that as children of God, what is before us, what is behind us, what is beside, left and right, is business of blessing. You must take the mindset of receiving your blessing as a business mindset. A business mindset is a mindset of seriousness in the things you do. Business in this context must not be misquoted to say buying, selling, trading is a mindset. A serious, conscious mind being focused on the thing that you do is a business mindset. And that's why we say it is a mindset that guarantees you blessing. If you are focused and serious, doing the things that are important unto you, you get the best results. And that's why the word of God says that if you so sparingly, you also will read sparingly. So it has to flow from the mind. And so it is not a sermon that is intended to take too far. For even the word of God says, as concerning brotherly love, nobody should prepare his mind that somebody should come and teach it him. For even God himself has manifested in the spirit, in all realm, and in the heart of men, teaching them to love. And if you do not love, you cannot appreciate. If you do not love, you cannot give. Without love, there is no service. So, as concerning this, let us have the required mindset. If we have the required mindset, we are there. Read the first lesson. Uh, yes. this, our first Bible lesson was taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 to 8. Every man according, to, according as his purpose in his heart. So let him give, not God or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace about towards him, that he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved sisters and brethren, harvest is part of the Christian teaching. And so, in the church or the churches, you have a day always set aside as a day to present your gifts unto God. A day of harvest is a day of thanksgiving. A day of harvest is a, is a day of appreciation. And that appreciation is not automatic. It is always to the benefit of man 
but ultimately to the glory of God. Nobody can give God anything. But we can give to the glory of God. There is nothing in this life that any of us can give unto God. What do we have? Everything you give is to the glory of God and that is how he structured it. That my children should give to my glory and to be for the benefit of mankind. And that's why we see that everything we do in the name of God is man that makes use of these things. And so, if you have this understanding, then you will appreciate the concept of mindset. Because if you do not have the right mindset, the willing mindset, for God to be glorified in the things you do, the willing mindset, to give to the glory of God, a willing mindset to do things that will give glory ultimately to God the Father. Your mindset will be focused on the beneficiaries. And once you mistakenly focus your mind and your attention on the beneficiaries, you will not do it willingly because you will begin to act. How is his relationship with me? Has he been greeting me? Has he been doing this? Is she up and doing? Is he very, very, very good, very committed? You begin to try to play things down and it affects their willing mind. So whatsoever thing that you do, you must always reflect and ensure that you are standing on a very good footing. And that very good footing is that you must do the thing that is required of you to do to the glory of God with a willing mind. A willing mind to glorify God. A willing mind to honor God. A willing mind to give thanks unto God. A willing mind to give thanks unto God. As it is said, commonly, among us, when things that are of a good fortune happen unto us, and then people come around cheering up, and you say, I give all glory unto God. I give all honor unto God. Now, you must make sure that the thing that you do, sincerely from your heart, that you return all glory you give all the honor deserving of what God has done unto you. Give back the glory, give back the honor unto you. Now, some think that if you give out, you will not have anything. Some think that givers are those that lack. Even though there is a very common saying that givers never lack. Givers never lack. It is true. And that givers never lack is derived, is coined from this first lesson you have had. Say, give joyfully, not smallishly. Not being afraid that you will become empty, having nothing. For God, unto whom you have given, is able, is able to make all things abound that you will never lack. If you give in the name of God, if you give and appreciate God purposefully, because the word of God says, let every man give according to how he has purpose in his heart. That is to say that everything that you do unto God must not come by surprise. You must plan to give thanks unto God. You must plan to glorify God. You must plan to appreciate God. You must plan to give things unto God. And when you plan it, mindset is built. As a willing mindset is 
view door. Then the spirit will be talking to you. And so you have time for the, for the, for the, for the, for the spirit to talk. How much is required of you to give? Not that you have so much. Not necessarily that you have so much in abundance. But because you are listening to the Spirit, and there is a purpose which you must fulfill, so it will be in your heart. And when it is in your heart, you plan for it. And because you plan for it, when that day comes, such as this day, which has not taken any man by surprise, it is in the heart of men, and it has been in our hearts. That's the last Sunday being this day of November, children of God will gather and show appreciation unto God. And so, because we have known, it is believed that the, the mind must have been prepared. So that's why I say, let every man give. According to how your heart has purpose. Not being afraid that if you give as much as the Father has told you or instructed you, you will not have again. And the Bible says, take away such fear. Just know that because you are giving unto God, because you are doing service unto God, because you are giving glory unto God. He unto whom you are glorified, or given, or honored, or appreciated, is able and very, very able to make things abound, to make your blessing multiply, to increase your money, to increase your wealth, to lift you, to position you, to, to turn things around in your life. He has that capacity. If only there is a willing man. It does not take millions to have a willing man. It does not have hundreds of thousands to have a willing man. With one night, you can have a willing man. Remember the concept of the widow's mat. With two nair, with ten nair, with fifty nair. Remember the word say, let every man give according to how he had purpose. So that's what we say is about planning. So it's not that there is no planning. One, there is no planning. It is doubtful to say whether there is a willing mind. So where there is a willing mind, you plan. One, there is a willing mind to do a thing, it calls for planning. And then you know the purpose. And so you give according to that purpose, willingly, believing that you are gift will come back to you in hundredfold. And that is what God the Father is capable of doing. Three happy chairs. Read the second Bible lesson.
there are simple things that you know, or you ought to know how things work in the spirits. If a, if a farmer found with the mindset of harvesting more than what he planted, then those that sow in God's very years must also have a mindset of having a reward more than their labor because grace will always come. Mercy is there. Mercy will always make a way and God gives to us even more than we give to Him. But do you have the mindset? Do we have the mindset? So we are admonished this day, this morning rather, to have a willing mindset to be able to give in appreciation unto the Father for life. For life, for victory over evil. For the grace, for the mercy, for deliverance, for many more things we cannot count. The year is winding up. Who can say that the, the Father is not faithful? Who, who can say that since January till now you have not seen the grace of God? Nobody can say so. If you have seen the grace, if you have seen the faithfulness of God, if you have tested the goodness of God, if He has delivered you from temptation, from evil, from wickedness of man, then there is a day, and that day is today. Show your appreciation. Yes. Now therefore perform the day of it, that as there was a readiness to him, so so there may be a performance also out of that which he have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is acceptable according to It is to acceptable when there is a willing mind. He said because there is an understanding. And he said to you, for everything you have to do unto God, you have to plan it and make up your mind. That's why Christ said that no one can follow him except he has first made up his mind. That was when he, he said, anybody who is not ready to carry his cross and follow him will not be able to make it. So, for you to carry your cross is that you must first have a willing mind. A willing mind to go through whatever up and down. A willing mind to endure. A willing mind to tolerate, a willing mind to persevere, a willing mind to be patient, a willing mind to always hold on to God, a willing mind to go through difficult times. So the willing mind is very important. And as you say, one day is an understanding that look. We have to do this. And you have that willing mind. It is not about how much. One day is a willing mind. It is acceptable whatsoever. Whatsoever. That's why we say it is not about lengthy sermon. Don't be confused about this. What you need is not one million. It's not five million. It's not anything. What you need to give the blessing is a willing mind. A willing mind is what you need. That's why the word of God said, now that you were aware, you were aware that a day like this is a day that children of God will gather and show appreciation unto God and you are here. Some are not here. For those of you who have the willingness to come, having known that this is what today is for. Now, perform the doing of such thing that you have will and that it is acceptable whatsoever thing that you have. It is acceptable. You will hear as the 
the um, that verse will wind up. You will hear that Paul said it is not the meaning of God that any man will have so much and become a problem or a burden to the other person. That the intention is that let there be a day where those that have, those that do not have, will come together in the spirit of sharing whatever is available, that there will be joy. Not to, to burden. The essence of appreciation is not to bring burden. And nobody should see it as a burden. What so it is better everywhere you are. Whatever thing that is agreed to do to the glory of God must not be done sluggishly and seeming as if it is a burden. It must be done with cheerfulness so that the blessing will flow, so that every man will take the benefit of what he has opportunity to do. For the intention is not that some will go with heavy bags loaded with goodies and some will be, 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 be bothered. That's not the intention. The intention is that let as many as we are have the willingness of mind to do service to the glory of God so that we will cause joy. Let the giver be happy. Let the, 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 the receiver be happy. Let those that benefit be happy. Let the Father himself be pleased. That is the excellence. It's not to bother anyone. That is why I say, one day is a willing man. It is acceptable whatsoever, whatsoever that you have. It's not appreciating God. It's not on the basis of what you do not have. It's not on the basis of what you have. It's not. Giving unto God is strictly on what you have, not what you do not have. Doing appreciation to the glory of God Certainly, it's not on what you do not have, for it is on what you have. Because the truth is that no man can give what he does not have. You can only give that which you have. You cannot do someone else's thing and appreciate someone. You must only use your own to appreciate. So the truth is that if you don't have, you don't have. And you must not feel bad because God is the giver. You do not have because He has not also given unto you. So you take it easy, not feeling burdened, not feeling difficult. Many, it, many out there have interest to do something to the glory of God. But sometimes they do not have and they become very weak. They become very weak and they feel so bad. That's not how it should be. Nobody should feel bad. Nobody. He said, what do just have the willingness of mind. Father, you know my mind. You know my heart. You know if I have, I will give you my all. I desire to. But I do not have. Let your mercy be upon me. Grant open door unto me. That whenever opportunity comes, I will always give. That's it. You have your full blessing. Three happy chairs. Now, if he has also given you, the, the truth is that he is the giver. So he knows all those he has given. You don't repeat it. This appreciation comes once a year. So from January till now, he knows what he has given, and those that he has, uh, sorry, those that have received from him, he knows. So that's why nobody can cheat him. He knows who are who are not us. He has released money to their respective bank accounts. He knows those he has loaded their their, their pockets. So if this month, you have not received, but you have been receiving. And you now say, Papa, you know as it is now. That means you fail to plan. You fail to plan. Because as you are receiving, you must plan. He said, a day will come when you say, my son, come and show your thankfulness. 
So it will jump off. <laughs> Don't let that off. Any, anything where you get, Papa not sent. Thank you. 
today we are seventeen. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are called to appreciate God. We are called to appreciate or to give unto God, to glorify God. And we are told that God is the spirit. And now, therefore, you have been told that where the spirit of the Lord is, where he dwells, where he lives, where he is operating, there is liberty. But liberty is the foundation of the Father's work. It must be done from your hearts. Don't feel compared, not by force. It must be for no trading. Anything that is pleasing and acceptable unto God must be with the very high level of voluntariness. That is the liberty. That's why the word of God says, let us do this, not be out of necessity, but let it be that it is a task. There are things you do out of necessity. That means if you have your way, you will not. But the, the necessity, that is second task. Second task that puts you in a, in a corner that you have to do what you ordinarily would de 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 decline. So, giving unto God must not be by, by circumstance. It must not be that somebody is being compared. It must be, be done with a level, a high level of liberty. So, exercise that liberty fully by giving according to how you, you propose in your heart, according to the level of thanks in your heart. According to how much love in your heart, how much love do you have in your heart toward the Father? According to that love, appreciate Him, sing His praise according to the love in your heart, according to how you feel, according to how He moves you, according to the things He has done unto you. Express your love, express your thanks, express gratitude freely, liberally, according to what he has done unto you. Not by force, not to please anyone. Not to please anyone. Don't look at anybody. Don't even listen to anybody. Don't. Some of us do things and we don't get anything because we're, we are opening ears to hear, opening eyes to look at faces. And then you form opinion. Even when somebody is not frowning at you, and you say the person was even frowning, how do you know? <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> there may be something, somebody may be thinking something in his mind, having a thoughts, and joy comes to the heart of the person, and the person being smile and laugh. So don't look at anyone. Be focused. Do all you have to do to the glory of God. Knowing that only Him rewards. None of us can reward anybody. None of us. The nature of man, we are not even very good in appreciating one and another. We are not very good in being grateful. We are not very good at that. That's why any man who does anything for the benefit of a fellow man and his attention is focused on how much gratitude that other man will show, will be so discouraged in doing more. Man is not so very good in expressing gratitude or being thankful. So you must do the things you do unto God the Father who appreciates and rewards and does not fail in rewarding. The Father never fails. He rewards. And just know that nobody should compare you to do anything. 
Nobody should force you to do anything. Don't even be forced by what others are doing. Don't be forced in appreciating God, in doing something to the glory of God. Don't be moved by what another person has done. Don't be moved by the Spirit in you. Because the first let, let's just say, let everyone give according to how he has purpose in his heart. You must have purpose in your heart. If you do not have purpose in your heart, why you must be very thankful unto God. And you are now listening to how others who have purpose in their heart and have come all out to joyfully thank God and you want to move by that, you miss the way. As you are yourself, examine the love of God. Examine the victory you have re recorded. Examine the peace, examine the joy, examine his faithfulness, examine his goodness, examine the grace of God upon your life, the many things he has done for your children, the many things he has done for, for you. How he has died many times to escape death, to escape from evil men. How he has saved your, your life, how you were to die. But quite mysteriously, he appeared and saved you and set you free in a manner that nobody can comprehend, even you, you cannot un uh, understand how the Father did it. But the truth is that He has saved you. So let all of this form a purpose in your heart to move you to appreciate Him, not on what another person is saying or doing. Don't be moved by that. Move by the personal experiences you have. Let the personal experiences you have, let the joy, let the goodness, the mercy of God move you towards appreciating Him. That is where you have the, the fullest blessing. Brethren, at this point in time, we shall not be beating you. Let those who have here, let them hear. The man who shall say, I am so for the case of the church of the man. The Father, for the time and for the Amen. Let things and praises be given to them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let things and praises be given to them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of life in the back, the pattern of your children. Thank you, Father, for opening our hearts to receive this gospel. We pray that you give us the Holy Spirit to be the practitioners of this gospel now and not forever. My thanks and praise be given to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My thanks and praise be given to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.